Welcome to RC Maintenance with your host, Han Dash. And as you're probably aware, this channel here is dedicated to the fans that make Honda Dash Productions possible. Okay, this episode is going to be covering the shocks and the oil that goes in them and how to clean them and properly maintain them. Come to the part where I'm going to be showing the different supplies that we're going to need to do this. Now, first thing you're going to need to do is choose your shock oil. Now, like I said before, I like to use 70 in the back and 40 to 45 weight in the front. Now, I used to do it with uh, the opposite, actually. I used to use 70 in the front and 45 in the rear. Then I come to find out that that caused different types of performance issues and had trouble churning and just other things, to say the least. Not to mention, jumping it uh, made it extremely... Um, front heavy, so it had a tendency to almost flip over when it landed. So anyway, like I said, choose the different type you need, and you can buy it at any hobby store, generally, and they usually come in about one to two ounce bottles, and they're sh sold as shock oil or shock dampener oil. And there are many brands, such as Trinity and AE, so also what we're going to be needing to use is you know, needle nose pliers and backup pliers. In case you know your shock is shock top is really really on there, you're gonna need to have two sets of pliers in order to do that. Now I have here, if you notice, that I have two different toothbrushes. Now one's a heavy bristle toothbrush and one's a light bristle, and that is for those people that have the time to take to actually when they take the shock off is to clean the entire thing. Now as you know, when you're using it in dirt or mud or anything like that. Things tend to get dirty, and I mean dirty, they usually get up inside and under the boot and un, all around the inside, actually getting into the oil at some point. So, if you have the time to take, you're going to need to use two brushes to get in those fine spots like the threads below and under the boot part and above the, the piston shaft. You're going to need some kind of bowl of some kind. You can use, it doesn't matter, whatever, to catch, to catch the fluid, the, the dirty oil coming out. I like to use rubber gloves um, to keep my hands uh, good and keep the traction on my hands because things tend to slip, especially tools. So let's get to the part where I'm going to show you how to dismantle your shocks by taking them off the towers itself. Now, using a screwdriver, preferably a flathead, something that's kind of big and it's got a nice amount of torque to it. You can there's, there's many ways you can do this, but my method is to use a flathead. Simple, easy. Now what we're going to be doing. We're going to be taking the flathead, putting it in here, and then we're going to be putting and just popping it off, just like that. See how simple that was? Real simple. Now let's pop off the other one. Check the angle. Okay. Now, got that done. And those are popped off. Okay, now that we've removed the top of this shocks here from the tower, and we're removing the screws that are underneath here. And what we're we'll using is we're gonna be using a 2.5 millimeter hex or Torx. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be moving that. Okay, so we're gonna move in the rest of this here. Take your screw and just put it on off to the side and make sure that you don't lose that. Okay, now that I've taken off both screws on both sides of the car, so what you wanna do is they're gonna be pretty tough and you don't wanna tug on this, you don't wanna pull on any of this stuff here and you don't wanna damage the shocks. But what you wanna do is you wanna stick it in this side right here and just pop this thing out. Just pop it right out of the socket and it's out and that's how you remove your shocks so as far as step one is concerned we'll be done with that okay now that we've taken away our car and we've cleared out an area here kind of nice clean area to work with here um, just be expected that it's gonna be dirty you're gonna have a lot of dirt build up inside the inside the uh, shock area here especially the top of it here first thing you need to do is you're gonna need to take your screwdriver here. What we're going to do is we're going to take the spring here that's, that goes around here. Now there's a ring that keeps this cap on right here. It keeps it pinched together. So what we're going to do is you take the spring with your fingers, pull back the spring here. There's a little lip right there. Now you pull that lip, right? And then the rings are the whole thing's just going to pop off. What you want to do is you just want to take this and there should be a gap right here. Now now, you gotta you gotta keep compressing the spring down because it's just gonna 
shoot off once you get the little boot off here. What you need to do is you need to pull it down, pull this boot thing down, and then out. It should pop right off, just like that. Now set it aside somewhere close to you. And then now, the spring, make sure you do not, do not lose this part right here, okay? You cannot lose that part. Now, let's put that right next to the other place. Before I mention, if you're gonna do this, to clean it. So have something to put your parts into. Just drop it in there, drop your parts in, set that aside, and then I'll use that to take it to the sink. Now, the second part, spring here, needs to pop right off. Just, just come right off. Your springs to come, there you go. Just pop right off the boot. Put that little thing there. Okay, so you wanna do is we're gonna get, you wanna get your drain pan ready, whatever you're gonna be using. Tupperware works the best. It's often easier to clean than anything else. And what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna take your tool tools. I have my multi-tool here I'm gonna be using. And then I have this thing here. Now, when you be careful when you're pulling this off, and it's because there's a bladder, like a ball, I guess we can call it a bladder, at the very top of the cap. And um, you don't want to lose that, because it'll, it'll pop out. So what happens is, see, I'm going to pop this out. The cap is, this is relatively a cap there. You also have the bladder on top. So what you want to do is want to pop it out, pop out the bladder. You can either pop out the bladder and pop it in your little thing, or you're just gonna put it like that in your cap. And generally what I like to do is I like just to toss and put it to the side, where, preferably where there's no dirt at all. And just put it on the ground. Now, just dump out your stuff there. Now, as you can tell here, my mine is relatively clean. As you can tell, by the, I like use the clear, clear Tupperware because it kind of shows you what how dirty or how clean it really is. So, now when you're doing this, you want to take the piston rod here, the rod, and you want to just, just kind of caress that stuff out of there, just pump it down. You can hear that squeak there. And just kind of drain it out. Put this off to the side. Mostly all shocks, there's actually pistons inside here, and if you look inside here, I'm trying to get a view of inside of my shock there. Um, but mine actually has holes where the pistons come up. And then where the pistons come up there, that means where the more holes there are, and some come in three, some come in four, some come in five. In my case, mine is actually five. And that means that when the pistons, when the, when the rod comes up here, when it comes out in, that means that there's the fluid and the oil can come push through easier and so it makes it so it comes easier up and down. So, like I said, you want to get there and push the, and push it up and down, and you can hear it kind of coming out. I'm gonna do it nice and slow. Get all the, get all, the all of it out of there. I'm gonna let mine sit upside down. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work on this one. I'm gonna get this top off here, and then um, start draining that one. Okay, so the final part is coming up here. We're going to be filling the shocks, of course, and what we need to be doing here is, um, side note is, <laughs> it makes me kind of laugh that they sell, stores sell these fancy shock holders for doing stuff. And you know what's funny is, when you take your back tires off to do your shocks, right, you've already solved your own problem. What I like to do is, like, take the tires that I removed, okay, line them up on top of each other, take your shock. Make sure it's completely, fully extended out. I mean, as far as that piston can come out, as far as it can go. Drop it ever so slightly inside it right there. And there you go. You got yourself a shock holder. All right, now, what you want to do is you're going to take your, your weight. And in this case, I'm going to be using the 78 here in the rear. And what you want to do is you just want to pour some fluid in there and fill it, I don't know, fill it about quarters of the way, maybe less, just just enough to get in there, get enough oil in there. Now, okay, so take it out, and ever so slightly, just very carefully, push the piston up, and you should hear that squeaking noise, that's that's normal, and what you're going to be doing is you're, you're pushing all the air bubbles out of the piston. Now, get all that air just going without. And then just put some, put it back in there, and then 
replace the fluid some more. Um, pull back out again and just push the air out of there. As you can see, when I push it up, and what you want to do is just let it push it up just enough to where you could and look inside it. When you look down inside of it, you'll see in here air bubbles just being pushed out and pull that piston all the way down and push all the way up. Pull it all the way back down again. Put in your little makeshift shock holder. Now just go push it all the way up and just, just do the process and do this, you know, over and over until you kind of get all the air bubbles out. And then what you want to do is when you don't hear any more and you pull all the way up and push all the way up again. You just want to look down the side and you'll just see these tiny little air bubbles. And you just keep pushing it up and down, like I said, and working all those air bubbles out of there. And you don't have to fill it all the way up either. I mean, all you have to do is just push the piston all the way up, push the piston all the way up, drop it in there like this, and then just fill it up to where just just about three quarters of the way. Not very much. I mean, it doesn't need that much oil. Just fill it up just to where it's. And once that's done, just what you want to do is you want to take your little shock makeshift shock thing. And you have four tires, so you need, you know, you not to, you know, just do this shock by shock, and just take it fully extended out, and then put it in your, put it in like this, and just let it sit there for about, I don't know, uh, maybe about, maybe about three minutes, about three or five minutes, give it about three or five minutes, and then, then pull the piston again, and then check and see if there's any any air bubbles in there or anything like that. If there is, just let it sit for a little longer and just let it be there. And then, so I'm going to let that sit there. And um, while I'm that sit, I'm going to do the other shock as well. Okay, so now um, after we've completely put all of our fluid in and everything's good to go, all the air bubbles have been taken out and stuff, I personally let mine sit for about 10 or 15 minutes. And then um, now that we got all that done, now it comes to the, 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 the uh, tricky part. It's, on, it's called rebound. And what rebound is, is that it's, the rebound is when your shock comes, it compresses up, I mean, it's maybe a jump or anything, and then depresses. It's the amount of length that allows it to come back out. So if you want to have it come, your, your rod come out, like fully extended, like you don't really worry about that. You want to have it go three quarters, um, three quarters in, you want to go about halfway up. So you want to bring the bring the thing about halfway, um, yeah, about halfway up to the top there. Now it's about a half a half rebound right there. And if you want, say a three quarters rebound, which I like to run a three quarter or a quarter rebound in the front of mine uh, or in the back anyway, especially in the back. But what we do is we'll have to go up just just a quarter. So let's move it up to just a quarter. And then that's where you go. So when you have it up just like that, about a quarter of the rebound, that's when you put your, you, sh you should have your bladder in there in the very top. You make sure it's all the way around, nice around the top there. And then take your top, your cap, and we're basically going to be doing the reverse process of taking it off. And make sure that you get the cap on, the, on there, you have to get the cap on there nice and flat. Um, and making sure that you don't damage the outside of the bladder. Do is make sure that after you've tightened your the top of your shock mount very tight. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take our spring. It's right here. It doesn't really matter which way you put it on as long as it's a, it's a spring. So you just slide it on here like this until it pushes up and it pushes up inside the area here. It'll kind of push itself in there. And then what you want to do is you want to take, you want to de depress depress the screen uh, the spring as much as you can okay the spring and then then take your ring that you have here right you put your ring on there so it's in there nice and tight and then you take your cap you get your cap and so the rings in there just the first thing that goes is make sure that rings in there it's important and then take it and push it far and spring far enough down to where you can get your piece on just just below the the, the metal or that plastic piece and then it should just slide right back in. If you got that little tab part lined up perfectly with this part right here. Okay, your spring is nice and 
nice and good. So anyway, I'm gonna actually, so the last part of this whole thing is gonna be putting this back on your car, which is a little tricky process to do, but once you do it, you can get it done right. We're gonna get our shocks back on our RC vehicle. Okay, what we're looking at here is the holes to which the, um, the top, the bottom of the sh shock is gonna be put into. Now, what I've been noticing is that there, there are two holes here. There's one on the high side and one on the low side. Now, these holes will determine whether the, the, what the height and the compression and decompression of the shock will be. If you put it on the high side, the, 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 um, the shock will tend to say have, a, have an angle, so that will make it more, um, what's the word, articulation will be more an issue. Um, and if you put it on the low side, the one here low, it will actually make the ride height more stiffer, and um, the, the shocks will take more for the shock to compress and decompress than it would be. So that means it would take more of a punishment. So let's move on to uh, choosing your hole, depending on which one you want to use. I myself, I'm going to choose the, the low side, and we'll get we'll put that in there. Okay, what we want to start with is putting the actual shock here in the the hole that you desire to chose. So like I said, I chose the low, the low side. I'm going to put mine in there. Now the trick is is to get your get it started with your screw that you hopefully have put somewhere safe and didn't lose because these are crucial uh, and put it halfway in the hole there and then I like to come in come in from the angle this way and then work your way this way you'll see there's a little divot goes and you can just sort of slide it into where you want to go it is extremely difficult when this is popped on to compress this and wiggle this in so if you notice it's kind of hard to get it in there in the first place just by even having it free hang right there. Now imagine it being having to compress it with your hands at the same time trying to shove it in there and then get it quickly get the screw in there. And it makes it extremely difficult. Okay so we're gonna do this. We're gonna be putting this piece here, this piece here on the top of the shot tower and put it directly on there. So okay your shock is on so that is it. Um, and like I said, I have the other one to do, but that one's just pretty simple. It's the same, same, same process. So again, my name is Honda Dash 84. This is my channel. And so I really hope this really helped you. I hope you enjoyed our video. Honda Dash, I'm Fast Crash. She's going to be teaching you things. I'm going to be learning things and hopefully helping you out. Hit yes. us up on Twitter. Exactly. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel as well. Don't forget to check out our featured channels and then also these playlists we put on the side here. Make sure to comment and let us know what you do like. If there's anything that you need to know, just let us. You know, just hit us up. If you got a personal question, it doesn't matter. Like, we'll make a video out of it and we'll show you what to do. Exactly. Feel free to leave that in the Q&A section or in the comment section bottom below. So, I'm Lana Dash. And I'm Fast Crash. And have and a good you, day. And stay, yeah. stay classy. That's right. You stay classy. Go. No, this is San Diego. But, uh, so, I mean, but, enter, enter your state here. Have a good night. <laughs>